Hey guys, what's up? It's Brandon Body Logic here at the Hyperhuman Headquarters with another character breakdown. And today is about the big green guy, the Incredible Hulk, who's not so incredible these days. Now, if you're new to the channel, please hit the like button and think about subscribing to hear more breakdowns and analysis on superhero science and psychology, especially on this one because there will be a part two. Okay, so if you saw Infinity War, which you should by now, spoiler warning, the Hulk needs help. And no one is paying attention to him. Not even Bruce, honestly. Um, we do know that there are plans for developing this storyline, which has already begun and started with Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok. And most of this is centered around the distinction between Hulk and Bruce Banner. They're becoming increasingly aware of each other now. It's like split personality almost. Now, I have a couple of theories of where they're going to take it, possibly Red Hulk, but we'll come back to that another time. Right now, we've got erectile Hulk's function, which is a term I totally took from a YouTube channel, uh, Let Me Explain. So all the credit goes to that dude. Um, I did not come up with it, but it's a perfect description. So why does the Hulk have performance issues? Why is he refusing to show up? Well, the obvious reason is because Thanos kicked his ass, and it freaked him out. But it's not so much that Thanos wrecked him, because the Hulk has been wrecked before. I mean, in Thor Ragnarok, he got his butt kicked, you know, in the gladiator match on Sakaar, and Hulk would have lost that fight if it weren't for the Grandmaster, who was able to incapacitate the God of Thunder with a baby electric shock. Um, that doesn't make any sense. But I digress. Um, he got wrecked with the Hulkbuster in Age of Ultron, um, so he kind of lost that battle too. So the Hulk can take his licks. He's lost before. But when it came to Thanos, this was something different. Whether Thanos was using the Power Stone or not doesn't really matter here because there's something bigger going on. I saw one YouTuber, uh, Emergency Awesome, he posted a video about like it was like five or ten questions uh, that Infinity War raises once you watch it. And one of them was, what's going on with the Hulk? Saying that uh, if he was afraid of Thanos, okay, understandable. But when Bruce tried on several occasions to Hulk out, Hulk refused, and there was no Thanos around on either occasion. So, why? What's the deal? What gives? Well, the reason why is much deeper than I think most people think. See, the battle with Thanos was the first time ever that the Hulk was confronted with his own mortality. Okay, now I know that may sound a little severe, but that's exactly what it probably felt like to Hulk in that moment. It was not only a feeling of fear he had, it was a feeling of fear that he's never had before. And it was in his domain of competency, as it's often referred to in psychological frameworks. Hulk's domain of competency is fighting, battle, combat. And nine times out of ten, he typically finds himself as the king of that domain, no matter the battle, no matter who it is. So he fights Thanos, a person that has a similar physicality to the Hulk, and the exact skill set for combat Hulk has never had to use or is even aware of. Hulk smashes, that's what he does, but Thanos boxed him. I mean, look at the combos Thanos put together. It was crazy. When Thanos overpowers his hands, the look on Hulk's face says it all. I mean, his entire world, everything he identifies with, just shatters. So when Hulk refuses to come out, when Banner tries to make him, we're actually dealing with PTSD here. Okay, It's, it's, it's much bigger than fear. Fear is a part of it, but it's actually really a, a traumatic experience. And the problem stems from the fact that Hulk's maturity level is that of a child. Um, he doesn't know how to process what just happened to him. You know, what happens when a child loses for the first time or, or if they're learning the first couple of lessons about the concept of winning and losing? You know, when they lose, it's extremely upsetting. What does a child usually say? I don't want to play anymore. And, you know, that's basically what Banner, what, what the Hulk said to Banner. Now, in order to break this down further, we have to go back to the first Avengers. And I'm disregarding the other movies here because they don't really count with this um, present iteration. But if you look back at the first Avengers movie, Hulk has been going through you know these phases of development. So in the first Avengers movie, his first uh, quote-unquote appearance as the Hulk is when the ship explodes and he transforms in the lower level of the ship and Black Widow's down there. And, you know, at this point, he's the approximation of an infant. You know, like first phase kind of development. He's like a newborn baby. You know why babies poop and pee on themselves and sometimes even you? 
Uh, well, it's because babies don't distinguish themselves from the rest of the world. They don't actually know the difference. They don't know there's a you and then there's a me. They think it's all just one big field. They're pure expression. That's what they do. This is why the Hulk attacks everybody and everything on the ship. He's pure expression at this point. And what does Hulk express? Rage, power, smash. So he starts doing his thing because that's what he does. This is why he attacks Black Widow and everybody else on the ship, friend or foe, it doesn't matter. Now, toward the end of the movie, Hulk's development is accelerated, and he's kind of in a terrible twos phase. He understands that there are people you hurt and people you don't. Uh, he's now aware that there's a difference. He's part of a team or a tribe, or whatever he may approximate as a family. But he still is in his terrible twos, and like most children at that age, he has a flair for mischief. You know, they call it the terrible twos for a reason. They get into all sorts of trouble. They throw tantrums. Some of them know exactly what they're doing. And even the, even if they shouldn't do what they're doing, they sometimes do it anyway because they're actually testing the limits of what they can do and what they'll be allowed to do. You know, that's how children learn. Now, in the final battle scene of the Avengers, Hulk wasn't harming the people on the good side. But when Cap gave him the orders to smash, what did he do? He kind of gave this devilish grin like, okay, now I have permission to hurt people. So... There's that mischief. And it also expresses itself again when uh, he takes down the ship with Thor and he punches him halfway across the room. You know, there again, just more mischief. Terrible two type of stuff. Okay, so stay tuned for part two because we get into Age of Ultron and we actually see Hulk crystallizing his role and becoming aware of his own capacities. And what, what happens in that movie completely explains his behavior in Thor Ragnarok and why he refuses to show up in Infinity War. So uh, again, please like, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for...